The more Shopify collections that you can create and rank in the top three spots of Google, the more money you'll make with e-commerce SEO. Simple as that. Now, I know I may get seem as simple as, you know, adding the copy, adding the products, building a few links, and all of a sudden you rank number one. It's not quite that simple. There's actually a six step framework I use to ensure that all of our collection pages rank in the top three and all of our collection pages continue to drive organic revenue over time. So today I'm gonna to break down uh, visually that six step framework I use with all the nuance that kind of goes into it. So um, let's get into it. Okay, so uh, we're gonna kind of follow this like main blue line here, but I'm gonna show you some auxiliary kind of nuance and sports here. So this is how to rank a collection or category page, right? I work with Shopify brands only. If you're working in WordPress, wherever else, category pages and collection pages, those are the same things, okay? Now, first and foremost, choose your keyword, right? I'm assuming I don't need to walk through how to find keywords for collection pages, okay? Things to consider though, keyword difficulty, depends who you are, right? If you're a huge brand, keyword difficulty is pretty pretty useless to you because you can rank for pretty much anything. But for most brands, it's like less than 40 KD, whether you're looking at Ahrefs or Semrush, is like pretty doable even if you're like, a fairly new site. Okay. That's like kind of where I like start my limit of searching, even if we're like a brand's been around for a couple of years, like 40 is doable. 40 is pretty doable. Anything less than doable. 50, you're kind of like, you're getting into a gray area. Okay. Verify the search intent. Again, just like Google the actual keyword, make sure, make sure there are collection slash category pages showing up in the top three to five results, right? If you Google a keyword and you think it's for a category page and all of a sudden it's a, like the top three results are, are product pages, or the top results or blog posts, like doesn't matter. Category page won't rank no matter if you follow the rest of this framework or not. Okay. And then um, hypothesize conversion rate. Again, like if you, I always use the protein powder example. I'm gonna use it again. But like if you are like a vegan protein powder company, for example, and you are, your goal is to rank for protein powder, you have to assume that people looking for protein powder aren't also looking for vegan protein powder. There's a very good high, there's a very high likelihood that if you, even if you were to get to the number one spot, which is unlikely, even if you were to get to the number one spot, like 99.9% .9 of the people that land on that page are going to bounce right away. So actually think about like the keywords you're targeting, make sure like you actually could sell to those people. Don't just rank it. Don't just like try to rank it just because, right? If your conversion rate is going to be near 0%, don't even bother with the rest of this video. Okay. So choosing keyword, step one should be pretty straightforward here. Now, optimize your collection slash category page, right? I put a few videos up on this. This is like my collection page kind of framework, right? Um, main nav, H1. Um, you can use a banner image, but honestly, it's optional. Short description, about 75 words or less. Target keyword should be um, in the short description, ideally front loaded. Again, product grid here, and then H2 with three H3s, each with about, each with about 100 to 150 words of copy of descripting, the descriptive text under each H3. H3 should be unique selling points, right? I've done a video on this, so I'm not gonna cover this extensively. Um, and then internal links, which I'm gonna get to in a second. Okay, so that is optimize your collection page. That is what it should look like. The copy can all go the bottom. You can split it. I wouldn't put it on top, but like that's basic framework. Okay, again, go watch uh, my channel for that. Next up, build internal links, okay? Now, just one note on this, like Google is getting really strict about how many pages are crawling on your site, even big sites. We have like a DR55 or 60 econ brand we work with, and like we publish like 10 collections and blogs. None of them got indexed, so we had to run it through an indexing tool. So if you're gonna publish like 100 collections, for example, find an indexing tool that works and run them, like run the pages as they go live through that tool. Otherwise, the collections will probably just sit and like not crawl or they may get crawled, they won't get indexed though for like months if you just never actually force it. Okay. So that's the first thing. Now, build internal links. Two ways to go here. Um, from supporting blogs, I've talked about this internal link framework pretty extensively, right? But like, here's a collection right here in the center. Um, this one, again, you should be linking to it from supporting collections, from blogs, right? All the links are funneling into that. At the end of the day, if you do this right, you, your collection pages will have more internal links than any other pages on your site, which should make sense. That will indicate to Google that they are indeed important. And of course, pages with more links rank higher. Simple as that. So that's supporting blogs, pretty straightforward. From similar collections, again, I talked about over here. Again, I, I just build like a basic text menu in um, for this, like shop similar collections. Um, I've done a previous video on internal linking with collections. Gymshark does a good job, and I'm actually gonna use them as an example in the next step here, uh, but they do a really good job of internal linking, and it's something I'd recommend you implement, especially if you've got a big product catalog and or you have a lot of collections, okay? 
So that's internal links, basically two things to follow, similar collections and supporting blogs. Okay, now add to the homepage and to the main menu. You build 100 collections, you're probably not gonna add them all to the main menu, right? I would assume you're not, unless you're like Amazon, you're gonna go just like mega menu type deal. Um, but again, considerations. You need to consider the link slash like crawl depth um, of a page, okay? Ideally, if you wanna rank a page, a new collection or an existing collection on your site, it needs to be within one to two clicks of the homepage, three at the maximum. Anything below that, like you're gonna struggle unless it's like a super weak SERP, okay? Like if you go four or five clicks from the homepage, unless it gets like 10 searches a month and it's like a really weak SERP, like that page is gonna rank, okay? So I'm gonna talk about an example of this in a second, okay? But like, should you add to the homepage? Should you add to the main menu, okay? Homepage is a little bit easier. A lot of people do like collection carousels. So like a carousel, like top performing collections on the homepage. Some, I've seen brands do two or three of them. So you can load like a bunch more pages on there. Adding to your homepage is a good thing. One, because you probably have the most backlinks or not one, primarily because you have the most amount of backlinks probably pointing to your homepage. And so if a collection is linked from there, it's getting a lot of the link equity or link juice passed directly to it from the homepage, okay? Now to the main nav again, like similar, similar deal, right? It's linked from pretty much all the pages. So um, it's definitely getting crawled if it's in one of those two locations, but it's not, you have to think a little bit differently about it, okay? So let me show you Gymshark for a second. So the way Gymshark does it, like I'm still looking at their leggings. Um, everyone knows what leggings are, obviously. Okay, so I'm under women, leggings. I'm on their all leggings collection page, okay? Now you'll notice they have a few other collections in here, high-waisted, scrunch, black, flare, seamless, so on and so forth, okay? Now, like high-waisted and scrunch bum, for example, like are also in the main nav, but also linked here, which is a good thing for different reasons. But like leggings with pockets, you'll notice, oh, it is in here, okay, it's in the main, it's in the main nav too, okay? Now if you go to the bottom now, okay, you'll notice like they've got all these other ones, right? So they have like black seamless, brown leggings, squat proof, cropped, high-waisted seamless, pink, right? You'll notice like none of those are in the main nav, okay? However, just because they're not in the main nav, like they still rank well. And the reason is because this page I'm on, this all leggings page is exactly one click away from the homepage, right? Because it is in the main nav. So that's one, we're on click number one. Then if I wanted to click on like pink leggings, for example, that's click number two. So based on this, all those pages are within one to two clicks. They're at click number two, okay? Those pages are gonna rank because they're so high in the site, like architecture, site hierarchy, however you wanna think about it, okay? So you need to think about that, right? You can't just like add a hundred internal links to some random page and expect it to work, right? <laughs> I had a client I consulted with like many, many years ago um, and they basically just like put them all in, which they put them on like, one page link to the next, to link to the next, link to the next. And all of a sudden they had like a crawl depth or like a link depth of like 30. And like those pages just never got indexed. Um, at the time it was probably a bit of bad explanation or a bit of loss in translation on my end or on the client's end. Um, we ended up correcting it and ended up working out. But just like, you have to think like, if you want a page rank, it's gotta be within two clicks of the, of the homepage, three at the most absolute maximum, okay? Now, backlink gap. This is one thing no one ever thinks about almost everything's about rather. You're gonna use SEMrush or Ahrefs, whatever your tool of choice is. You're gonna set a few filters. You're going to figure whatever your budget is, and then you're gonna split the links between the collection and the homepage. Now, I'm gonna do this with an exam, okay? Now, let I just am looking at this keyword, best skincare for dry skin, okay? So I'm looking in SEMrush, and we've got besides Healthline, every, one L, every other result up until Quora, so Results two through 10 are all category pages, okay? Um, okay, this, okay, let's say not all of them. Most of them are category pages, right? Two, three, four are category pages. So for all our intents, like you need to be in the top three spots anyway. So this is where we'd be, I would want to compete on, okay? Now, let's say, all right, so like Sephora, okay, like you can look in this column, referring domains, backlinks, okay? Now, of course, like Sephora only has five referring domains here, but like we all know Sephora, they have a huge backlink database. They're one of the biggest e-com brands out there, right? Now, let's say 
you, it's hard. You can you can analyze link gaps on like a particular page, okay. However, it is you also have to consider like the amount of internal links to a page, okay. So let's say like let's exclude the internal link part because it is a bit it is a bit confusing, okay. But like let's say twenty two backlinks Sephora has and they rank in the number two spot, okay. Now let's say I had zero backlinks currently. Like this is a new page I'm targeting for a new brand or like a. This is the first time I'm targeting this collection, okay? Let's say I had zero backlinks, right? Because it's a new page I just built yesterday. Now, well, you can go into Sephora and like, click on their backlink gap here, or their backlinks. So this will be all the backlinks that point specifically to this page, which is really the only page I'm currently concerned about, okay? Now, I'm gonna set a few filters. I just wanna do active, I wanna do follow, and I wanna do um, type is text, and I want um, where else are we at here? Oh, link placement is in the content. Okay. So they've got eight backlinks to this page. Okay. And this is like, I will say like backlink gap analysis is not perfect right now, but it's, it's a good starting point. Okay. Now we've set all those filters and we took it from, I think 22 backlinks down to eight backlinks. Okay. So again, Sephora has an, an enormous backlink profile with a lot of good internal linking. Okay. Now what I have found roughly is that on a well-established site, let's call it like DR 40 and up about four to five internal links is equivalent to one backlink. Okay. So like Sephora building like four or five internal links will outweigh even one of the backlinks. Right. So for every four to five internal links that point to this page, for example, you can essentially add a num a backlink to this list, right? Now you could go and analyze, you could run like Streaming Frog on Sephora, or if you have Ahrefs, you could look at like the uh, the internal link analysis on there and you could find out exactly how many pages link to that. And then you can essentially find the link gap, okay? So let's say they've got a hundred internal links pointing to this page for dry skin. All, all math assuming like four to five internal links per backlink, that would put you at roughly 20 to 25 backlinks that essentially cancel out their internal links. Then you would tack on these eight. So now you have a link gap of roughly 33 if you wanna rank for um, this keyword. Now, that's 33 links to this one page. Now, if I wanna rank this, if I wanna like, I'm, I'm a competitor and I wanna go out rank Sephora, I cannot simply just build 33 backlinks directly to this page. Cannot do it, right? If I'm a huge, huge site, I could do it because like there's probably a lot of pillow links out there that will get hidden. But for me, I have to build 33 links just to that one page in order to rank it, right? But again, I can't just build 33 links straight to a page. So I also have to build a, I have to build supplementary links to the home page or at least other page, probably the home page, but at least other pages on the site. That way I, my link building doesn't just look super unnatural aimed at one page, okay? So 33 links, let's say the average link is 250, 200 bucks, okay? So let's say like 250 is 8,200, 8,250, right? That's like total link spend, assuming a flat cost of 250. It won't be perfect, but uh, this is a hypothetical here, okay? So it's gonna cost me $8,250 just to get 32 links to that page. But again, I have to build some other links to other pages. Now, it doesn't have to be like a perfect one-to-one -one ratio, but I would say for 32 links, I would probably want at least 20 links to my homepage, right? So then you can take 20 times 250, let's say 5,000 plus 8,250, that's $13,250. Let's say, okay, so $13,250 is the total budget, is the total amount of link spend I would need to hit to, all things being equal to, catch up to Sephora, right? Now let's say my budget is, I don't know, let's call it $2,000 in links a month, right? Okay, then you just would divide it by 2,000. And assuming you do everything else right, your time to outrank Sephora on this keyword would be about six and a half months, okay? Now, again, this is like viewing it in a silo. And for a lot of keywords, that is how you should view it, right? But if you do a really good job of building internal links across your site, you build a lot of homepage backlinks, all the other stuff right, the timeline is actually likely, likely going to be faster than this, okay? But it is a good, like, frame of reference, okay? So now I know, like, okay, six and a half months to catch Sephora on dry skincare. If I'm an agency selling it to a client or, like, you know, prospect, like, pitching, proposing, whatever you want to call it, like, 
six and a half months is a long time to pay out. So how I would counter this is I would need to go find some weaker keywords that are a little bit lower in volume, but less competition that I could get and rank for and start making money for them faster than six and a half months. Reason being is most clients are not just going to hang around for six and a half months waiting for maybe to be in the number one spot, right? You have to get results faster than that. So for me, I'm just going to go find some combination of keywords that target post and care and dry skin. And I'm going to go win those in the first two, three months on the way to this, let's call it the summit about ranking Sephora. Okay. So back in gap is like, it, it's not a perfect system, but it's, it gives you a good idea, timeline, roadmap, cost, things of that nature. Okay. So that's that. And then from there you rank, like once you've closed this gap and you've done the content, the internal linking, all of that kind of stuff, once you close this gap, by, in perfect theory, you should be wherever you want to be. I assume the number one spot is where you determine the gap from and you start making money and then you repeat, right? You literally just go back to the top and do this for another keyword, right? Now it does, you can do them alongside one another, right? You can do all the content, all the internal linking like at one time, or at least again, a few days. The backlink stuff will be ongoing, right? It'll depend on your budget, all that kind of stuff. But if you're very like deliberate about your backlink budget, like this, how this will work. Okay. So backlink gap is like the one thing people don't talk about enough. Same with like crawl depth on collection pages. But if you want to actually rank a collection page for a very competitive, but also profitable keyword, this is the six step system you need to follow.